We have more fun political gossip news to cover today. I hate to say this, but it's another story worth covering. From the Daily Mail, again, we get disgusting, sickening. Joe Biden slams Donald Trump for questioning potential running mate Tammy Duckworth's patriotism after she lost both legs in combat in, in Iraq. Now, as someone who's been to Iraq myself, and someone who's seen people die in Iraq, let me be the first to tell you that should mean absolutely nothing in terms of my credibility. Listen to me, I've seen terrible things. Nonsense, absolute nonsense. Or I sacrificed for my country, therefore I must love my country. Nonsense, absolute nonsense. And there's so much emotional manipulation tied up in this story that that's what is truly disgusting and sickening so i i just the background here you know joe biden was the uh presumptive is, is the presumptive nominee of the liver of the excuse me of the democrat party whoo i almost said i endorsed joe biden again instead of joe jorgensen libertarian nominee for president uh, who happens to not be a, a sexual molester or a liar or a sociopath like the, the two old party candidates here. And he doesn't have a running mate, right? Of course, it's presumed that Donald Trump is going to stick with Mike Pence and be his running mate. So he doesn't really have to say anything, could switch up at the convention. But for Joe Biden, he gets to draw this one out. He gets to announce someone popular at the last minute who's not going to be subject to, to such intense vetting or background checking or things like that. So he's been uh, talking about potential running mates, and one of them, Tammy Duckworth, comes out. Now, who is Tammy Duckworth? Obviously, she is uh, in, in, in a raw combat veteran. And Biden, when Trump called it out, uh, you know, questioned her, her patriotism, called it disgusting and sickening. So jumping ahead in the story to, uh, you know, some of these uh, tweets, I mean, I, I, we got to see the, the firsthand reports here. So um, before we do, though, I just I, I have to I, I have to deconstruct so many of, of the premises in this story, I, I don't even know where to start, right? Now, patriotism is is described uh, or, or defined by most people as love of country, right? And, and, and that's fine in and of itself when you think about patriotism as, as something sort of organic to... You know what it, you, your relationship to your your fellow countrymen to, to to a land, to a territory, to 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 something like that. But as, as opposed to the country as defined by government, because if you say I I'm a patriot, I love my country, and and your country, like when I say I'm a patriot, and and, and I I define you know my country as as America, I define it as the ideal of America, not that which falls under the authority of the federal government of the United States of America. Because that's how most people think of patriotism. And it's, it's really very destructive. I mean, think about the inhumaneness of this, where, you know, you say, I love my country, I love my fellow countrymen, which is to say that I am allowing my love, my greatest life force, to be directed by government, the most evil force in the world, to say, I am going to love people who were born on this side of a government border more than on that side of a government border, some that for, for, for whatever arbit because because I've been conditioned to, because I've been taught to. That that's kind of sick. So, you know, I want to read just a quick section out of the book Freedom on Patriotism, or a little part of it. 
people have always derived a sense of identity from affiliation with groups. We compare ourselves to lesser groups to boost our sense of self-esteem. This inherent feature of the human psyche has been widely exploited to manipulate societies into tolerating oppression, even if we accept the creation of strong group identities as a service, governments have used monopoly privileges to charge far more than their services are worth. In the case of modern governments, the cost of strong national identities has been widespread war, theft, and manipulation. So if you want to say, I'm, you know, I, I'm that kind of patriot because I lost my legs in Iraq, you're kind of, you know, you're calling me a sucker, you know, and there are a lot of people like, you know, I, well, she lost it, her legs in a rock. She must be a, a patriot. Well, I don't know. I, I met some people in the anti-war movement who came back from war and were like, no, I am not a patriot anymore. I hate this country. This country means nothing to me now. This is, and they blamed the entire country, not the government, although I would not because the country is not to blame as a victim here. I don't think it's appropriate to engage in victim blaming because the people of America who don't understand the situation and vote for politicians who vote for war are victims here as well. They have been duped into supporting the war. But some people don't get that point. Some veterans who I know who were paralyzed, who lost limbs, who experienced PTSD and, and serious health consequences as a result of serving bankers, politicians, and war profiteers in Iraq and Afghanistan, they came home and said, no, screw this whole country. They're all, screw the victims for going along with it. Screw the victims for falling for this. And so this, uh, you know, what, what, what do we see in this back and forth now? You know, we talk about, uh, you know, about Donald Trump um, and, and, you know, even Tucker Carlson seems to have jumped into this saying that these people actually hate America, uh, you know, and, and Carlson addressed this directly, quote, you're not supposed to criticize Tammy Duckworth in any way because she once served in the military. Most people just ignore her. But when Duckworth does speak in public, you're reminded what a deep, silly and unimpressive person she is. It's long been considered out of bounds to question a person's patriotism. It's a very strong charge, and we try not to ever make it. But in the face of all of this, the conclusion can't be avoided. These people actually hate America. There's no longer a question about that. Now, first of all, this is so dumb. This is such a dumb case to make. I mean, Tucker Carlson is, 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 is I can't believe he's respected in some circles as a kind of intellectual or even as a journalist. I'm going to I mean, anybody who says he hates America, I mean, without without quoting someone like really, this is you're going to question someone's I mean, this is like saying you don't really believe in God, do you? You're really a heathen. You say you believe in God, but you must hate God because I read your actions. And I read your heart. And you're like, wait, what kind of you're a telepath now? What kind of psycho crap is this, Tucker? Yeah, of course, boot licking for the president and the GOP, trying to, you know, with all the talk of Tucker for president 2024, if we could have a reality TV star, why not a Fox News pundit? And of course, Tammy Duckworth plays right into this. Her tweet back, does at Tucker Carlson want to walk a mile in my legs and then tell me whether or not I love America? So this just feeds into the sort of the, the, the conversation that is about emotional manipulation and devoid of actual reason and logic in the discussion, right? Tucker Carlson is, is kind of discrediting himself with this, with this argument, because, you know, and I, I'm sure Tucker has, has, has plenty of better intellectual arguments against the ideologies of, of Biden and, and Duckworth. But you know what? Now that I think about it, maybe he doesn't. Because really what this reveals is that they all have the same ideology of statism. They want to use a central authority with violent, coercive control to exploit the rest of the population. They're arguing over different flavors of it. 
They're not arguing with logic and reason. This is attack the messenger logic. Tucker doesn't have an argument from logic and reason against modern American liberalism because he is a modern American liberal who wants to continue the status quo of big government. And so he makes his case for his different flavor of statism with emotional arguments. That's his case. Vote for my flavor of statism It'll make you feel good. And that's all of our modern political debate today. I'll at least the majority of it boils down to that kind of crap. And this kind of fighting over personality and patriotism. And you, you don't really love America. So now we get to see all of these pictures of Tammy Duckworth with her purple heart. And, you know, does, does she love America or not? I don't know. I don't, I don't think any of these people really love America. None of them. You know, you, wanna, you want me to, like, play, into the, play their same game? All right, fine. Uh, you know, w what do they love? When they say they love America, I'm not going to pretend that they don't. I'm not going to question the love that's in their heart. But let's, let's examine, if you ask these people to define America, would they give you any kind of answer? of virtue no america well you know it's it's the, the borders and the federal government and our and our history and, and and the flag and no no so this is just uh, you know just to the to the end of the article here because a, a lot of this is about the talk about statues right monuments very you know emotional like why do we why do we do that you know why do we why do we have these monuments why do we fight over symbols i mean i, th I think about the quote from george carlin i leave symbols to the symbol minded so uh, and by the way tammy duckworth i should have mentioned is a senator from illinois not just some random combat veteran so she was pressed by CNN's Dana Bash on whether taking down statues of Washington was a good idea. And she responded, quote, I think we should listen to everybody. I think we should listen to the argument there before turning back to Trump's comments at Mount Rushmore, which she, she said was on land that was stolen from Native Americans. Trump did not append any of his own comments to the clip of Carlson, but his campaign put out a statement later in the day, quote, after saying she was open to tearing down statues of George Washington, Tammy Duckworth is now using her military service to deflect from her support of the left-wing campaign to villainize America's founding. If she can't defend George Washington, our first commander-in-chief, those of us who still respect our founding fathers' immense sacrifice and think America is worth fighting for will hold her accountable for cowering to the far-left fascists and the Democratic Party. Now, little sidebar before I get to the final deconstruction of this concept of patriotism here. This statement is actually proof that the Trump campaign doesn't understand American history. And most of America doesn't because victory is, or history is written by the victors, right? And American revolutionary history really is no different because there's a big difference between the founders who said, screw you to the king, we're going to be independent and we'll fight for it if we have to, and the framers who wrote the Constitution that created a new central authority and screwed it all up. George Washington isn't actually the first president of this country. He was the first president under the illegal constitution, which was a coup, a power grab. It was illegal under the constitution that was in effect at the time, which was known as the Articles of Confederation. And what it did not only was create a new central authority, but institutionalized slavery, intellectual, prof intellectual property, and a standing army that the founders of this country explicitly opposed. So to the point about patriotism and why this, why, why they're happy to have the conversation, like they're debating this. 
not the size of government. Because remember, the Republicans and Democrats are both wings of the American Socialist Party. We have the Republican Socialists and the Democrat Socialists. They both want to maintain the status quo. They both want to keep government growing. So they're not talking about the Libertarian Party's candidate here, Joe Jorgensen, as a challenge to the system. No, they're just saying, well, let's fight over something that doesn't make any difference, but actually keeps that person out because, well, if you don't want to grow government, if you don't support all of the authority unquestioningly, you must not be a patriot, Dr. Jorgensen. So let's argue over our concept of patriotism between Tucker Carlson and Donald Trump and Mike Pence and Tammy Duckworth and Joe Biden. So here it is. Governments rely on a sense of patriotism in their victims to get them to go along with policies not in their best interest. They need us to believe that we are sacrificing for the common good when we are really aiding our victimizers. They need us to go along as part of the herd. They need us to accept the proclaimed selflessness of politicians acting only out of love for the artificial collective. They need to ensure that not too many of us victims are emotionally healthy thinkers who demand self-government and are secure in our identities as free, beautiful, independent people. Except when defined by something other than government boundaries, patriotism is proof that the patriot is not free.